Yes, he's made of something totally different. The Kazakhstani warrior who in his prime years nobody wanted to fight. And the ones who did rise to the challenge got absolutely ruddy walloped. Yes, one of the most dangerous, ferocious and toughest men to put on a pair of gloves. It's none other than this man. Uh, uh, well, yeah, to be fair, I mean, these pictures don't really do him justice, do they? I mean, he looks like he's running the local village fucking garden show, doesn't he? But looks are deceiving. This is Triple G. Gennady. Gennady the Vibida Bibidi. Golovkin. Yes, spot on. But before we talk about who avoided him, here are the reasons he became such a force. Yes, here we go. So then let's rewind a little bit, back we go, alright then, yes, oh yes, very nice, look at them, lovely. Anyway, let me return you to the late 80s and uncover the origins of this man's brutal toughness. Golovkin was a student of boxing, obsessed with the technique of his favourite fighter Sugar Ray Robinson, as well as the ferocity of Mike Tyson, trying to mimic them at every opportunity. But the lessons he learned through his brothers Sergei and Vadim are what would turn this man into a beast. They would taunt young Kennedy into fighting older boys as well as fully grown men on the rough streets of Kazakhstan from when he was merely in kindergarten. They say to him, are you afraid? But Kennedy would reply, no, am I bollocks? Or words to that effect. And they'd force him to start a fight. This would happen on a daily basis and it made him immune to the fear of combat. But sadly, in a tragic turn of events, as he honed his skills of the sweet science throughout his school years, both his older brothers who were now serving for their country were unfortunately killed in action in the space of only four years. The heartbreak on the family was hard to bear but Golovkin decided to carry on pursuing boxing in their memory, using the heartache as fuel to turn him into a destructive force. So from entering his first boxing gym at only 10 years old and interestingly losing his very first fight in the ring, as a teenager, he went on to conjure up an incredible amateur career of over 340 wins and a mere handful of losses. The losses only coming through narrow points decisions, never once being stopped and unbelievably never ever going down. An accolade that he holds to this very day, even after being cracked with this absolute belter by Canelo right on the button. Bloody hell, that same punch nearly detached Amir Khan's fucking head. Which brings me on nicely to his highly regarded double solid chin. Triple G rarely finds himself on the back foot, and with his pressure fighting, he has no problem taking one to throw one. He has been hit flush by the likes of Canelo, Lemieux, Rosado, Brook, or oh, Chuck Brownies, Jacobs, Maratta, and Derevan Chilichenko, among many more, and he has seemingly never even appeared to be hurt. This punch here is probably the closest we've ever seen him come to what could be classed as a wobble, but even here, he regains composure instantly and, of course, grinds out the win. Now, most boxing fans would agree that you're pretty much born with a great chin or you ain't. It's definitely not something you can easily attain, but combine Golovkin's toughness with his solid chin he's been blessed with his whole life, then sprinkle on a bit of relentless hard work, such as these excruciating neck and chin exercises in training, and you really do build an absolutely immovable fucking brick for a chin. And, uh, uh, oh dear, he looks like Will from the Inbetweeners. Anyway, yes, Triple G has always been touted as one of the hardest workers in the business, training himself to peak boxing fitness, producing another reason that he's tougher than a coffin nail, his insane strength. Now, Prime Golovkin appeared physically stronger in the ring than every other man in front of him, and the pure strength that he possesses is shown here in training as he crushes the hands of the reporter. But if you think that's good, he even does the same to four Former heavyweight contender Malik Scott. Yes, there we are. This strength really is quite incredible since Malik fought at over 17 stone in his day, whilst Golovkin has always floated around just under 12 stone. So yes, as I said, this man is built differently. But how does he utilise that strength in the ring? Well, he uses it to bully his opponents, keeping them on the back foot, always hounding, formidable and constant pressure. Now, of course, Golovkin has double lethal power in both them hands and we'll come back to that in a minute. But it's that overwhelming pressure that has caused a whopping nightmare opponents to throw in the towel, to retire, the trainer going, fuck this, let's leave it there, bruv. Knowing his fighter cannot withstand the volume of punches, the constant hounding. For instance, how can we not forget the Kell Brook fight back in 2016? But the ears are getting heavy now, the artillery, Brook sinks back. The towel's coming from Dominic Kingle. The towel's there from Dominic Kingle. 
Yes, the continuous onslaught led Dominic Ingle to do what he had to do, and he'd done the right thing, even though the ref didn't see it for quite a while, which he was a bit annoyed about. No, that's it, ref, no more, we've seen enough. All right, call it a day, pull him out. Ref? Ref? Ref, you big fucking baguette, I'm waving, ain't I? Oh, sorry, Don, me old mate. Anyway, Brooke gave a noble effort, but Triple G was just too much. Kel described him as having mad power. Mad power, you know, fam. Mad ting. Sorry, I've been watching Top Boy, innit? Say less, cuz, innit? You got the food, fam. Sorry. Yeah, anyway, it was the hardest puncher he'd ever been in with. And it leads me on to the final reason this man was so feared. Of course the punch. So with an incredible 37 knockouts on his record, 16 of which were straight KOs, he went on a run from late 2008 to the Danny Jacobs fight in 2017 with every single one of the 23 opponents he faced not reaching the final bell, breaking the ribs of fighters such as Matt Macklin, yes that looked like it hurt, cleaning out Curtis Stevens who pulled a face as if to say bloody hell I think somebody just hit me with a plank of fucking wood, and making Rosado look like something out of a Saw movie. He didn't go down though Rosado I'll give him that. However, the towel did once again come in. Yes, so the ferocious power comes from a massive amount of talk that he produces through whipping his hips as he punches. And it has been claimed by a bunch of boxing nerds that the peak force of his power is the same average as a fighter two weight classes above. And, uh, well, yeah, I did actually nick that info from this video on Golovkin's power. It is double interesting, though, so give it a little look. But, yeah, it weren't my own extensive research, do you know what I mean? But, oh, well, fuck it. Anyway, yes, with these five factors, the prime Golovkin really was was untouchable, and it's clear as day why old Eubank could not force himself to sign for the fight back in 2016, or maybe his dad had the final say knowing it was simply a very bad idea. But he of course was not the only one. Famously Miguel Cotto was ordered to face him back in 2015, but allegedly flat out refused. The Sergio Martinez fight never materialised, but many feel he didn't think he was up to the task either, and retirement was looming around the same time anyway. Now Jonathan Banks, Golovkin's trainer after Abel Sanchez said around this time they had to pay people double to get in the ring with him. Most of the guys who fought got the biggest payday of their career because that was the only way they would agree to fight him. And if I'm being double honest, I don't fucking blame them. It's a shame we never got to see fights like Golovkin Billy Joe, Golovkin Carl Froch, even Mayweather in a catchweight fight that gained traction at one point. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they ducked him, especially not Carl Froch. I think if the timing had been right, he'd have taken the fight. However, people do have their opinions. And there are also a number of critics who say that Canelo kind of waited until he saw the cracks in old Triple G's armour, because after a below par Danny Jacobs performance, lo and behold the fight was made. It's also a ruddy shame that he never got a fair crack of the whip in the first fight because Adelaide Bird lost her bloody glasses. I'm double convinced he won that. Anyway, his age began to show in the years after the second Canelo fight, but he's still to this day a ruddy force. However, in those glory years, in his prime, the man was a machine. They simply don't come any harder than this man. Big up Triple G. Big up the prime years. There we are. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Man's on a top boy ting saying nothing cuz. Calm yeah, man's rolling. Toodle pit bosh.